am I, pastor, required to tell the police and authorities if you confess a certain sin to me? Now, I'm not talking about like, okay, pastor, I was at the local H-E-B. That's the store here in Texas, you know, the, the greatest grocery store ever, but maybe you have the Meyer or the Safeway, something like that. But okay, if you steal a piece of gum, still breaking the seventh commandment, but we're not going to have a fear of me getting on the phone and calling and then, you know, Commissioner Gordon getting on with Batman and him coming out and getting you. That That's not there. But we're talking about, like, let's say you come in and you confess to me, Pastor, I was I was texting while I was driving, and, and I hit this person, and, and I was scared to death because I knew I was texting, and I just drove away. And you're the first person I came to see, and I'm confessing this. Do I then, because you've confessed that, have to get on the phone with the local authorities and say, hey, this person you found who's dead now, um, I know who did it. Well, no, I can't do that. What you did, was it terrible? Yes. Did Jesus die on the cross for it? Yes. When you come and confess that to me, are you confessing it to me as a man? No. And that's why the pastor asks you a very important question before he absolves you. He says, do you believe the forgiveness I speak is not mine, but God's? And he's asking you that for a very important reason, because he's asking you, do you believe that you've confessed this sin to Christ? You're not just getting it off your chest so someone else knows about it. You're not just venting, you're confessing it. You know you have sinned, and you do not desire to sin anymore, and you're confessing that. And when I absolve you, it's forgiven, it's forgotten. As far removed as the east is from the rest, drowned in the depths of the sea, as it says in the gospel according to St. Michael. And you bear it no more. Now as the pastor will, I tell you, hey, you should go and confess this now that you did this. I have taken care as the pastor of the eternal consequence of this. God doesn't hold it against you. You are forgiven. And now in that forgiven state, you desire to be reconciled. Because you need to have now reconciliation with those that you have wronged, your brothers and sisters. And you go and confess that. But it's up to you to do that. I can't do it. It's not for me to do. Because my ears are a tomb where sins go to die. And then absolution is given. So whatever you confess to your pastor, it is never shared because it's Christ to bear. He drowned it in his blood. It's hidden in his wounds. It's destroyed by his death. And you are absolved. So God bless y'all. Do I, as the pastor, call the cops when you confess? No, because Christ is the one who's forgiven it. And Christ says it's done, it's gone. There's nothing for me to tell. God bless y'all. We'll see you next time. Did we do good? Is that, is that okay? If, if you liked that, hit the button that says that you like that. Maybe even subscribe to see more of these. Even give, help us fund this mission of making known the gifts of Christ Jesus to youth and young adults. If you like this video, check out our website, higherthings.org, and check out more content from Higher Things.